good evening YouTube, or in fact good afternoon YouTube. Um, I wanted to make a video about UKIP. I was going to do a short one about the minor parties in the UK, but this is going to be a special in my election series about UKIP, because um, Pat Condell has come out supporting UKIP, and um, you know Richard Coughlin did a reply to him, and there's been various talk about it. I want to start by saying that, of course, Pat Condell supports UKIP. It's the perfect party for him to support. And secondly, did you really realise this was a bad thing? Um, okay, I know you know not everyone's familiar with UKIP, so what I'm going to do is going I'm going to go through some of their history. I'm going to go through their manifesto, and I'm going to go through their partners in Europe uh, and try and explain where they're coming from. Now, the, the UK Independence Party was set up by uh, someone I know um, called Dr Alan Sked. He's an academic at the London School of Economics. Um, and I have to say, he's actually a really nice guy. Um, he's the sort of guy you can go up to in the pub and ask him an obscure question about the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and he'll sit down and talk to you about it for an hour. Um, he left UKIP for two reasons. Firstly, he realised it was going nowhere, and secondly, a load of nutters were joining. Um, I had this problem that it was a single issue party, it was all about Europe, wanting to take Britain out of Europe. Um, so it needed a broader policy platform. And what it chose was populist nationalism, effectively. Um, now, populist nationalism is fairly common, but obviously it took on the partic you know, particular effects of being populist nationalism in Britain, or in the United Kingdom. Um, it calls itself libertarian, um, conservative and libertarian. Now, so I think that's right libertarian rather than left libertarian, but as we go through, I think it's going to be fairly clear that they are not libertarian. Uh, populist nationalist is a much better description for them. Um... So they, they, they've had a few different leaders. They, they really started doing well under um, Nigel Farage, who, who was a very good um, leader for them. They, they did much better under him. They've currently got an idiot called Lord Pearson of Rannoch. I'm going to put a link here to a video where you can see him uh, on a British news television programme discussing his manifesto by saying that he doesn't want to talk about the detail. There will also be a link in the annotation box. So, the UKIP manifesto. I'm going to go... The, the manifesto is called Empowering the People. There's a link in the sidebar. Um, the main thing they want is to leave the European Union. This is the... For them, affects everything. It's the summer qua non. And everything that is wrong with Britain, it seems, according to UKIP, is because of the European Union. Now, personally, I'm a big supporter of the EU, which is a minority position in the UK, I know. Um, there are problems with it. I recognise a lot of them. The worst one being the common agricultural policy, I think. But to say that everything is coming wrong is coming from the EU is um, hmm, cuckoo. Anyway, the first thing they say is... I'm going from the summary, which I'll put on the... Uh, in, uh, in the annotation as well. First thing they say, under the one, the economy, tax, budget and regulation, save up to 120 billion a year by leaving the EU. No British jobs or trade will be lost. Rubbish. Um, right, the... By being within the EU, so we've got, you know, the harmonised economy, so that everybody knows what the rules are, um, we become a more attractive place for investment. Um, simple, simple fact. And in future, if we leave the EU, and they're not, you know, this isn't renegotiating or you know trying to rearrange the opt-outs. This is, you know, throwing up the, the 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 borders and saying we are leaving the EU. You know, no no part of it at all. We're going to be losing losing out on foreign direct investment. Um, a good example, I think, being car companies who come here and set up the manufacturing plants here. We've got the skilled labour, we've got a business-friendly environment, and um, they, you know, they, you know, we're in the EU, so we're in the in the rules, the yeah, the market of rules. Um, take right, take take tax off the minimum wage by raising the tax threshold to eleven thousand five hundred. Actually, I think it's a really good idea. Reduce everyone's taxes with a thirty-one percent flat tax. Well that doesn't actually work because if it's a flat tax you, you know you can't actually have a point where it kicks in. That's 
very basic progressive taxation. Even so, I think a flat tax um, on a principle is wrong. And the amount that's going to bring in a lot less money, it's going to be various people paying more tax, particularly if they're the sort of you know, middle, yeah, lower middle class or lower middle earners. Um, abolish the tax on jobs. Phase out employees' NI contributions as national insurance over five years. Um, axe Britain's gigantic Crango Mountain and public sector non-jobs to reduce UK national debt. Um, well, the... the Big problem with that is that okay, there's lots of quangos, quasi-autonomous, non-governmental organisations. Um, the problem is that uh, you actually need to hire people to fire people, not permanently, but you do have to administer down the change. Um, and there's always room for getting rid of fat in the system, or well, you have to recognise that that is taking jobs away. Um, but you can't just go through and cut out everything because you end up cutting cl too close to the bone. Release businesses from 120,000 EU laws. Uh, I'm not going to talk about where the, the, they've got the figure 120,000 from. That probably includes all of the regulations. Um, all I would say is that those regulations would still have to be made. They would be made in the UK rather than the EU. And it would probably be sensible to harmonise them with EU regulations um, so that we can, you know, we can still deal with them easily, um, except we're losing a say in them. Now, those regulations um, aren't always mandatory ones. They're things like saying um, what the default sizes for parts are, for like screws, I don't know. Um, you know, you can still make other sizes of screw if you want, it's just so that there's a standard one. I'm not going to go through every single line from now on because otherwise it's going to take far too long. Um, the economy, jobs, enterprise and skills. Um, Big one. Um, abolish costly EU schemes such as carbon capping, emissions trading and landfill taxes. Um, OK, right. Carbon capping and emissions trading. OK, they're, they're an anti-green party. They're not buying into climate change, I would say. Landfill taxes is a particular one. We send, in, Particularly in the UK, we send far too much to landfill. Um, this, you know, we need to be more disciplined here if this is a way of disciplining us well. Whatever, it's not ideal, but it, it works. Amend the UK takeover code to prevent foreign interests from gaining control of strategic British companies. Um, now, which are strategic British companies? That's the key question. Um, now, there's already provisions for the defence industrial base. Um, so, you know, you can go and retain golden shares and so on. Um, I think the Board of the Trade has veto in some particular areas and it can and so on and so forth. So I'm guessing this is a response to the takeover of Cadbury, a chocolate company, who do make very good chocolate, by um, Kraft, Kraft Foods of the United States. Now, leaving aside the, the pros and cons of that, they cannot possibly call themselves a libertarian party if they are advocating um, a form of protectionism. Uh, and saying that certain companies have to remain British. Immigration and asylum. Uh, this is going to be a classic. End uncontrolled mass immigration. Um, this is a sort of you know, motto for them that comes out on a regular basis. Um, there, there are signs up in my town saying, you know, 5,000 um, immigrants settle here every week or, or something, not in my town, in the country, I think it is. Um, okay. I'm going to do my best not to accuse them outright of being um, racist. All I'm going to say is that if, in that case, we you know we're leaving losing leaving the EU, uh, which is what they want to do. It's the only way we can do it because part of the EU, you know, we have the right to go and work on other EU countries. They have the right to come and work here. If we're leaving the EU, all of the Brits in the European Union are going to have to come home um, if they you know if they're sort of reciprocity in the way we treat them. Uh, no one else is going to be able to go out and, and you know, live out there. Uh, immediate five-year freeze on immigration for permanent settlement. Um, that has the immediate problem uh, when you add in um, introducing a strict new points-based visa system and time-limited work permits of we get people into the country who are skilled, um, give them some extra skills, and then um, the, their time limit comes up and they leave. 